as you can see I started with a black and white charcoal sketch on top of a gesso 16 by 20 canvas and right now I'm filling in all my dark blue shadows as you can see in the background and I'm checking my reference photo to see if I'm getting the lines and the direction right I'm just trying to get the movement not trying to make it perfect one thing I didn't want to do is try to make it too perfect or try to make it exactly like my reference photo because that would be nearly impossible I'll just stick to making it look more abstract because it, it looks better that way adds more texture and makes it more interesting to look at when you're painting something like fabric you always want to make sure that you're maintaining abstraction throughout your entire painting because one thing you don't want to do is obsess over making it perfect it's just better to paint it more loose because you want to look at a painting and it doesn't have to be hyper realistic if you don't want it to be one thing that I like to do is I like to paint on a neutral gray background instead of a white canvas because it's easier to judge your colors and your values and the way I make my backgrounds is I just mix white gesso with black acrylic paint I'll be sure to label all the supplies I'm using down in the description box below Now that I'm starting the rug, I put down a dark gray color so that my light gray highlights can stand out on top. And I'm just trying to make sure that the texture is in there. It's a very short rug and it has a nice pattern. And I want to make sure that it stands out when I put the highlights in there. And as you can see, I threw in some random colors to maintain that abstraction. And now I'm putting down the highlights and I didn't want to use pure white because that would have been too bright. So I just used a light cream color. I'm going to go back and darken some of the shadows behind his legs so he can stand out a little bit better. So right away as I start working on the dog, I fill in the darkest shadows with black and I go on top of those with a dark brown because his eyes are a very dark brown but I also want to make sure that they stand out a little bit so I'm going to add a highlight in there just so you can see where his eyes are. And as I'm working on top of my sketch, I always want to be mindful of uh, where things are so it can be accurate. When you're painting eyes, you don't, you don't necessarily want one to look bigger or smaller than the other. You want to get them just about right.
as I move away from the eye, I fill in some shadow color around his skull, picking out the darkest areas that I see. And I'm not painting the fur just yet. I'm just filling in the shadows and later I'm gonna go on top and start actually painting the lines of the fur. So as I paint the nose, I started with a dark brown and added lighter browns on top, but I noticed they were a bit too bright, so I had to go back and darken them with grays because I looked at my reference photo and saw that it was a tad bit more dull, but that was okay. I just had to darken it a little bit. And it's really important to always look at your reference photo because if you paint something too bright or too dark, it might throw off your entire painting. So right here I am painting in the impression of fur and one thing you want to do is you always want to paint in the direction of where the fur is growing because you just don't want to put random lines down. As they move on to the body. I make sure that my shadows are dark enough, the same as I did for the face, because I want to make sure that when I put the highlights on top that it will stand out. I do the same thing with the legs, just start by adding some dark brown colors in the shadows. One thing I will say is that you want to make sure that you get the shape of the legs right and the way they're angled because that can be the hardest part. You just need to make sure that you check to see if your drawing's accurate or constantly look at your reference photo, to see if everything's in place. So right here, I went back the next day or so and made some of my shadows a little bit darker because I noticed they were darker on my reference photo and I wanted to make sure that it was as accurate as possible. You always want to make sure that your shadows are dark enough because if they're not, your portrait might end up looking flat and that's something you don't want. So right here, I skipped ahead to show how I put in my highlights. I just gradually make each layer more lighter than the other to make sure that the fur is really thick. It's something you don't want to do in just one layer. You want to build up each layer lighter to make sure that it's realistic. So last, I paint in his collar. And as you can see, it's a very dark color. And most of it was in shadow anyway, so it was pretty easy to paint. And the metal part that you see underneath his mouth, I went in and made it slightly brighter because it was kind of dark in my reference photo. And I wanted to make it look kind of reflective and reflect some of that sunlight. And 
that ends the video.